All right, so non-ideal inverting amplifier at DC or low frequencies. So we saw that uh, non-inverting amplifier, non-ideal values of the closed loop gain, input resistance of the circuit and output resistance of the circuit are very, very close to the ideal uh, values that we used, that we derived in chapter number two. So let's look at the inverting amplifier. Again, um, we are going to we are not going to assume all the three non-ideal parameters at the same time. Again, this complication uh, of the derivation, uh, but we are going to use some of them, um, not all of them, at the same time. So again, in the first one, when we are discussing the gain, we will assume non-ideal value of the open loop gain A, which is approximately a typical value is two hundred thousand for seven four one, and uh, we are still assuming input differential resistance of op amp rd to be infinity and output resistance to be zero so again without going into the derivation this will be the exact and non ideal gain equation right this is the exact or non ideal gain equation now remember the ideal gain equation for inverting amplifier acl ideal you should remember it it was negative RF over RI. Remember, it's an inverting amplifier. That's why the negative sign. The input and output phases are 180 degrees. Um, they are 180 degrees out of phase. So RF over RI is the gain value. Negative sign tells you that output and input are uh, opposite in phase. Now, the exact value or non-ideal value is given by after derivation that we are not showing. Again, it's in the book. It is negative RF over RI. That is the ideal value divided by one, one plus one over a times beta. Again, remember a is the open loop gain about 200,000 let's say and beta is the voltage feedback factor which is pretty which is the same equation as we used in the case of non-ideal amplifier, uh, non-inverting amplifier. So beta is ri over ri plus r so again, once again, this is less than one based on the values of RI and RF can be 0 0.1, 0 0.01 or somewhere that may perhaps less than 0 0.01 if your gain is more than 100. Generally, uh, we don't have, you know, very large uh, uh, closed loop gain, um, you know, from a single amplifier. But in any case, beta is uh, when you multiply beta value by A, you are going to get 200,000, 20,000 somewhere less or more a little bit who cares the only thing is that's going to be still be a very high value in the denominator and when you take a reciprocal of that value one over that it is going to be very small value as compared to one so in essence in general acl exact and acl ideal are going to be very close to each other as simple as that okay so observe that ACL non-ideal can also be written as, as I said, ACL ideal, which is the top part, divided by 1 plus 1 over beta A. And it is the same for both amplifiers. If I go back to the last one that we discussed, ACL non-ideal, ACL ideal over 1 plus 1 over beta A. Why? Because remember again, your equation here is 1 over beta. 1 over beta is ACL ideal, 1 plus RF over RI, right? So the numerator is ACL ideal for non-inverting amplifier, and the denominator is 1 plus 1 over A times beta. So although the, the ideal gain equation is different for both inverting and non-inverting amplifier, but the generic equation um, to calculate the gain is same. This is the generic equation. ACL non-ideal or exact is equal to ACL ideal over 1 plus 1 over loop factor beta times A. Uh, let's look at the input resistance. Um, so again for the non-inverting amplifier input resistance was infinity. For inverting amplifier your input resistance is as you did this is your this is your input voltage this is Ri, this is grounded, go up a little bit, 
and this is your feedback resistor so this is the inverting amplifier that we use and if we assume this is the input current so we input minus zero since this is the virtual ground over r i is equal to i i or in other words v i over i i is equal to r i so input resistance is equal to the value of this r i for inverting amplifier that's the ideal input resistance value so what is the non-ideal input value again we use this circuit as given in your book first we calculate r in dash which is the input resistance looking into the operational amplifier assuming assuming that the differential input resistance is non-zero remember its value is typical value is 2 mega ohm and assuming that open loop gain as uh, is not infinity it's 200,000 typical value so first we calculate this input resistance R in dash and then we come back our, remember our source is here this is our input value and then we calculate the input resistance looking from the source towards the circuit so the total comes out to be these two appear in series total comes out to be r i which is this value plus r f over one plus a which is r in dash so this is r in dash right here once you do the derivation this is what you're gonna get so this is your input resistance and again what is a a is typical value 200,000 so 1 plus 200,000 1 is negligible of course so RF over 200,000 let's say your RF is 1 kilo ohm 2 kilo ohm 5 kilo ohm whatever but this factor is quite smaller than 1 quite smaller than 1 and if you add this factor in the input RI RI it is not going to make much of a difference so in essence again the input resistance is going to be equal to the ideal value which is ri the last one is output resistance the output resistance of this amplifier and non-inverting is ideal value is the same r out is equal to r out ideally and ideal r out is zero so the output resistance of the circuit is approximately zero now we do the same um, arrangement of the circuit. We apply a test source at the output, um, calculate the thevenin circuit, and the circuit becomes similar to the one that we discussed for the non-inverting amplifier when we, what, what, when we basically ground the input. It's going to become the same circuit. So it will be the same circuit, same derivation, same equation as we obtained for non-inverting amplifier. And again, as you can see this value is quite large r out is 75 ohm in general 75 ohm over a very large value approximately equal to zero so again the non-ideal output resistance of the circuit is equal to ideal output resistance of the circuit or it's very close to ideal output resistance of the circuit example is given to you look at that example it will make perfect sense to you and the last thing in this uh, chapter, we're going to discuss noise gain next.